time to talk about oh <laughs> hi hi everybody it's misty from the suburban edge that place between the country and the city where together we can learn modern homesteading skills it's the first couple weeks of october right now where i live the first hard frost can come anywhere between like a week from now to the second week of november I have a lot to harvest. I've been working through a cold. Yay. We've had about two weeks of rain and I'm looking at a forecast of about four to five days of sunshine. It's the perfect time to pick my squash. I'm going to lay it out for those five days and then the rest of the time they'll have to cure up in my loft. Today's the day. In a previous video I talked about leaving your squash on until the first hard frost. You wanna leave your squash on to give it every chance to just mature and develop. There's several ways you can tell your squash is ready to harvest. The first one is this. When the plant starts to die back, it's telling you it's done. And you can see this is all kind of starting to go. The second thing is, you can tell this one's not quite ready, but this has a nice yellow color. This stem here is starting to dry out and get a little corky, whereas this one, the still green, has a still green stem. Okay, let's go back to this guy. It's going to have a hard flesh that's going to sound hollow when you tap on it, and you can't easily poke it with your fingernail. So I've determined this one is ripe, it's ready to pick, and it's definitely done doing its thing. You don't want to cut your squash right here at the tip. You want to leave two to four inches of stem. So really as much as you possibly can. That's perfect. If you cut it off too close, what's going to happen is it won't be a winter keeper. They call these winter squash because if you cure them right and store them correctly, you should be able to eat these throughout the whole winter. If there's still a blossom, pull that off. It just would, it contributes to rot. So I'm going to set this aside and we're going to just keep on picking squash. Oh yes, these are little babies, okay? You want to handle them very gently. Don't carry them by the stem. Don't huck them into a pile. Don't drop them. Uh, make sure that when you're laying them out that they're not touching each other. These are very fragile, even though they seem sturdy. I keep losing the remote. It's pretty awesome. Okay, I have too many pockets. Not there. Not there. <gasps> Found it. With the spaghetti squash, you're looking for smooth yellow, skin. Uh, it shouldn't be stripy anymore, but I've got two renegade squash. Like this guy is kind of different. Everything that grew on this side looks like you would expect, but everything that grew on this side still has a little bit of the stripy. I don't know if it's a different variety. I really don't know, but let me show you this. Still stripy but it has all the other characteristics. So I'm picking it. We'll see when we go to eat it if what kind of monster we have. This one still is a little green, um, but it just fell, it just now fell right off the vine. It's hard as a rock. I don't know, I'm not gonna try to winter keep this. It'll be one of the first things we eat. So cute. I want to talk about my green squash. Let's talk about green squash. This is not ready. I can leave it here for a few more days and I plan to do that. But these little guys, if your vines are healthy, of course, they're going to keep setting fruit all season. So the ones that are lower down usually are ready to roll. The higher up ones are, they're just immature. Don't throw those in your compost heap. You can cook with these. Because they're not fully mature, 
they are going to be less rich or less deep in character as far as flavor goes. They're a lot more starchy. They're going to act a little bit more like a potato. So anything you can do to a potato, fry, roast, you can do with the green squash. Now you can't find green squash in the produce department of your local grocery store, but if you're growing squash and you end up with green squash at the end of your season, don't despair. You can use these. I mean, we all know we can use green tomatoes, but green squash are fully edible. And in fact, we're going to do some fun experimenting and see what we can do with our green squash. Not in this video. You'll have to wait for it. Did I mention I have a cold? Okay, I'm on to the butternuts. Same rules apply for your butternut squash. We got a beautiful here, a beautiful butternut. So there it is. I can't get, you know, too much stem because that's a little shorty, but I'm gonna give it as, ooh, that's hard, as much as I can. That's a beautiful butternut. So the ones that are lower down, this one's not very big, but the ones that are lower on the vine are usually ready to roll. Unfortunately, most of my butternuts are immature. I'm going to let the ones that I might have a chance go a little bit longer on the vine. The rest I'm going to set out to start to cure. One thing I want to do is I want to take this guy. This one right here is at the top of the vine. That's the very last thing that the vine did. It doesn't have a chance to mature. It is a brand new butternut. And I'm going to take it in the house and experiment with it to see what kinds of fun things we can do with green squash. Green winter squash. I have a couple of baby, here let's set this guy down. I have a tiny little baby spaghetti squash. There's no way this is ever going to have enough time to come to fruition but it's food so we're gonna try to use it next week I'll come out and finish harvesting my butternut and it will probably have to go cure in my loft um, I'm gonna leave them on the vine for as long as I can though and another green spaghetti squash I have a couple actually but um, this is a big green one that's never going to finish so we're going to just play with it and see what kind of great things we can make with the green spaghetti squash. I think the other butternuts will benefit from a few more days in the sun. We have, I think, four or five days of sun. I'll have to keep a close eye on the weather. But I'm not worried about frost at this point. But the ones that are done, we might as well start to process. So let's head over to where I plan to let them lay out. I'm standing in front of our straw bales that we purchased for next year and I'm going to cure my squash up on top because this tarp will get nice and warm when the sun does come out today and that will just help it. Now some tips about your squash. So this is curing winter squash for long-term storage. Number one, don't wash it. Number two, if it's raining at all, misting, drizzling, don't try to cure it outdoors. You're just promoting rot and you don't want that. Take them into your house, take them into your garage to cure. If you've got some sun, which I know I'm going to have at least four days of sun, try to cure them outside. That's the best place. I live in the Pacific Northwest, very unpredictable. So you you may already be in the rainy season, which we are kind of at the beginning of our rainy season. I just saw this window and thought a perfect opportunity to grab it. Uh, even if I'm only curing for half the time in the sun and half the time in my garage space, that's okay. It's better than nothing, right? We're, we're doing our very best. How you know that your squash is cured for long-term storage is that that stem will completely dry out. It will be very, very hard and brown. When you're curing and also when you're storing, do not pile your squash on top of each other. In fact, don't let them touch each other. So you want to have some airflow around each fruit, okay? I'm just going to go grab them and lay them out. I have all my my squash up there. There's one that has it has a hard skin, but it's really green stripy. So I may need to eat that one. We're going to go ahead and 
deal with this one quickly as well. The thing about green winter squash is it, they're very fragile. You have to handle them with care. They don't store well outside of the fridge. So if you're not going to eat this right away, it's best to just pop it into the fridge. Um, and I did check this with my fingernail, and even though it's it's so hard, the skin the skin in places it's very weird. I'm not sure. This might be done. We might be just eating delicious spaghetti squash. I don't know. But I don't know if this is a zucchetti squash. I don't know. But we're going to eat it. It doesn't matter. And I have some babies we're going to experiment with. I wanted to say thanks for all of you new subscribers. Welcome. It's just great having you. I have so many green tomatoes. It's ridiculous. But we're going to be out here harvesting green tomatoes and planting our green tomato ketchup and green tomato salsa verde. So if you are not yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and always the notification bell. If you have any comments about squash, if you've had success or fails, any, any hints or tips, please comment below. I love connecting with you and have a blessed day. Here's that first squash video. Bye.